Aloha everyone, Nebius just dropped a monster quarter three earnings result. Triple digit growth, hyperscaler deals with Microsoft and Meta, and a capex acceleration that screams demand is greater than supply. On the other hand though, the stock has just dumped hard over 30% after earnings. If you are a holder of Nebius though, don't panic. I will be here with you during the good times and the bad. So stick around to find out why this situation is not as bad as it looks. Let's fly through the real story behind the numbers and what to watch next. Let's see how Nebius performed in quarter three. So Nebius's earnings was 146.1 million versus a $155.7 million estimated. There was a slight miss on revenue, but this was not due to demand. It was due to capacity. So the capacity comes online in waves. So the revenue miss is a deployment timing hiccup. So demand is not the problem, capacity is. The ARR in September was $551 million, which was plus 28% quarter over quarter. Their gross margin was 71%, which was flat quarter over quarter. Their adjusted EBITDA was minus $5.2 million, better than the minus $5.8 million estimated. And the core adjusted EBITDA margin equaled 19%, which is much faster improvement than what was expected. Finally, the earnings per share was minus 40 cents versus a minus 52 cents estimated. So we did a lot better on EPS than expected. So everything was a good result apart from the revenue, which was only a slight miss. So moving on to the guidance, the year end ARR for Nebius for 2025 was 900 million to 1.1 billion dollars. This looked huge at the time, but now the year end 2026 ARR for next year is seven to nine billion dollars. Just look at that increase, guys. From 1.1 billion dollars at the end of 2025 to now having a guidance of seven to nine billion dollars, nine X on the ARR in one year. That's very impressive. And check this, this is the kicker guys. Over half of that capacity is already booked. That's insane. That's why I say that this dip is not gonna last very long guys. It's a heavy dip, but it's not gonna last long. So I'm gonna try and buy while I can and take advantage of this opportunity because I feel like it's not gonna last very long. By early 2026, the stock will have bounced back pretty high and I don't want to be in a regretful position of not taking advantage of this opportunity. Connected power for Nebius in 2025 target was 220 megawatts. Now in 2026, the connected power guidance is 800 megawatts to one gigawatt. The contracted power for end of 2026 is more than 2.5 gigawatts, which is two and a half times what they were predicted in 2025. And let me just quickly explain the difference between contracted power and connected power. Contracted power is the total megawatts that Nebius has secured on paper. So this is land and utility for future build outs. Just think about it as it's their reserved power pipeline. So connected power is the subset that's physically wired to data centers. For example, substations, switch gear, etc. And ready to be used once GPUs are installed. Think about connected power as it's what's plugged into the building. So if we map this to Nebius's build phases, first Nebius will secure land and power, which is their contracted power. Secondly, they will build the data center and connect electricity. This is connected power. Thirdly, they will install GPUs and turn workloads on. This is often discussed separately as active or energized capacity. But guys, that seven to nine billion dollar ARR target for 2026 is the headline. It's massive. If deployment hits on schedule, growth should reaccelerate sharply through quarter four and early 2026. So be ready. Okay, so here we can see that the ARR was seven to nine billion dollars expected annualized run rate revenue at year end 2026. So this is what they're guided to make for next year. This is a 
visual representation of their contracted power so how much it's expected to increase 2.5 times and then you've got your connected power which includes power that is fully provisioned and can be activated immediately upon gpu installation so as you can see there's big jumps from 2024 to 2025 and massive jump to 2026 this is why i'm excited about nebius in particular these three boxes is showing massive expansion is really looking good for the company so if they can execute that's that seems to be the only point that people are mentioning as a downside to nebius is whether they can execute but you have to realize that they have the most experienced russian mastermind team who are just so dedicated to what they do that they will make things happen and i have no doubt about that so nebius is sold out of all their available capacity this is the reason why they couldn't do a larger deal with meta nebius signed a three billion dollar deal with meta but the reason it was only three billion dollars was because nebius didn't have enough capacity to give to meta they were completely sold out and that's a great sign that's showing that everyone wants a deal with nebius it's just nebius cannot supply fast enough so that's the reason for the 10% dilution that they announced as well to fund their future growth. Debius now needs to grow at a level beyond what they're used to. They're really going to be a huge tech company in the future. So both of these companies, is the deals are over five years. To be honest, Nebius is going to be huge by then. So I'm pretty certain that they will continue their contracts for a lot, much longer. So as you can see, Nebius is working with cutting edge AI startups, Black Forest Labs and Cursor. Some of these startups could even end up being huge companies in the future. Now you can imagine if they use Nebius as a platform, how good that would be for Nebius. I will talk about these a little bit later. So now we'll move on to CapEx and funding. The guidance was raised from $2 billion in spending to $5 billion spend. So Nebius has already spent $2 billion year to date. Approximately $3 billion is slated for quarter four alone. Their cash holding is $4.9 billion at the end of quarter three. So their funding will come from three levers which they can pull. So the first one being corporate debt, the second being asset backed financing supported by top tier customer credit and the third being the ATM equity program of up to 25 million class A shares. So that was the shareholder dilution I was talking about, which is gonna help fund their expansion, which is already at a super fast rate. However, management do say that they'll be dilution sensitive and use it only as needed. So now we'll move on to a couple of new things that Nebius introduced. First being Nebius AI Cloud 3.0 Ether. This is an enterprise grade security and compliance uh, software. So a lot of you may be unfamiliar with these terms alongside me, of course, but I'm still learning about this. But what it means is the companies that are using Nebius as a platform will have greater control over their security uh, services. Second thing Nebius announced was the Nebius Token Factory. This is an inference as a service which unifies fine tuning, optimization and large scale inference with sub second latency and 99.9% .9 uptime. So they're built for the next wave, enterprises and independent software vendors productizing AI. One client even cited that they had a 26 times cost reduction after optimization. So if you think about it, these things that Nebius is introducing is how they're gonna turn capacity into a sticky, higher margin recurring software revenue. Once Nebius's customers use these services, they're not going to want to move to a different provider because Nebius will be the best. As you can see, these are all the locations of the data centers for Nebius. So the United Kingdom data center has just launched for Nebius. The capacity has nearly doubled since June and it's largely pre-sold and they're aiming for a peak in January. So things are moving very fast. The Israel is live and effectively pre-sold. There's strong government support for AI adoption in Israel. So this is very good for Nebius. The New Jersey data center, which I've talked about many times, phase one is starting. And also there is an option to add hundreds of megawatts later. So this is going to be obviously a huge site. But as you can see, Nebius is expanding across the globe, which is looking really, really good. What shocks me is the pace of expansion. They're moving at a speed that I haven't really seen before personally 
from what I can think of. And these sites are why quarter four and early 2026 ARR should accelerate. Okay, so Nebius is scaling discipline. So what Nebius is using is a three stage funnel to expand and scale. First, they're acquiring land and power. This will be approximately 1% of the capex spend. What they're doing is they're locking in scarce electricity first. Second is to build data centers. This will be approximately 18 to 20% capex spend. And this will involve the shells, the electrical, cooling and batteries. And thirdly, they're going to deploy GPUs. This is where the majority of the capex spend occurs and it's going to cost approximately 80% of the capex. They will only spend when demand is contracted or visible. So the biggest near term constraints are power and supply chain. The staged approach that Nebius takes preserves flexibility and their margins. So now we'll have a quick look at the Nebius subsidiaries. So Avride have an Uber partnership which is up to $375 million in strategic commitments. The Dallas RoboTaxi launch is targeted for December 2025. Triple Ten has approximately 100% year-on-year revenue growth, approximately 6,000 new students, a new AI analyst program, and Nebius Academy for Business to Business. Toloka has just completed its hybrid human AI agentic tech, launching Tendem.ai, and Nebius still retains its majority stake in Toloka. So ClickHouse is a huge company, which I've done a separate video on altogether. Um, I've done a separate video on all of these, but Nebius now has a minority stake. Their ClickHouse ARR is up four times in 12 months. They have marquee AI customers and there is potential of it going to IPO, which will raise a lot of capital for Nebius should they sell their stake in ClickHouse. So this is my take on the earnings for Nebius. Demand is not the problem. Capacity and power are. Visibility is rising thanks to Microsoft and Meta and the pre-sold sites. They have a great software stack which is further developing due to Ether and the token factory. And these are what will unlock the margins for Nebius and recurring revenue. The funding will step up. So watch for the mix and execution on asset backed deals and the ATM pacing. So what to watch out for in the near term will be new site announcements, power deals, Blackwell deployments, and ARR cadence through early 2026. This drop in the stock price should be seen as the greatest gift to us retail investors. Nebius is on sale right now. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. As you can see, the fundamentals of the business still have not changed and Nebius is still headed towards being an absolute beast of a company in the future. I personally don't want to be in the situation or the position where I regret not buying Nebius at these low, low prices. Even when Nebius was at $110, it was still a great buy because of the future it has in front of it. Now, it's a no-brainer of an investment for me, and I've never felt so bullish on a company as I do with Nebius. If you found this breakdown useful, hit like, Drop your questions below and subscribe to the Nebius Network for more updates on Nebius. See you in the next one.